Hi, check it out. Here we are. We're at Petersburg. We're in Petersburg. This is a historic town. It is one of the most photographed places of the entire Civil War. When you include City Point, it's certainly in the top five. And let's just start with one of these. I have a picture here showing the Southside Railroad Depot, if that's visible there, Doug. Um, you can see it, and that's the building right behind me. And to talk about all things Civil War Pier uh, Petersburg, here's the author of a book called Civil War Petersburg, Will Green. Thanks, Gary. It's great to be in uh, Old Town Petersburg here. And as Gary indicated, behind me is the oldest railroad station that's extant in Virginia. This is the uh, depot of the Southside Railroad, which ran from Petersburg to Lynchburg. It was uh, chartered in 1846, but uh, construction began about 1850, finished in 1854, and that's when this building was constructed in 1854. The Southside Railroad Depot also served the City Point Railroad, which was an eight mile short line railroad that connected Petersburg with uh, the little village of City Point. Uh, one of, uh, these are two of five railroads that came into Petersburg. Except for this one, each of the other railroads had their own depots. The Norfolk and Petersburg Railroad, the Petersburg Railroad, sometimes known as the Weldon Railroad, and the Richmond and Petersburg Railroad all had separate depots. And this was by design because when Petersburg was such a railroad hub, and as people came into town, whether it was freight or passengers, trains would arrive and they would have to be transferred from one railroad to another. And that created jobs and economy. People had to move the freight and people from one depot to another. If the train schedules didn't align, then you had to buy a meal or spend a night in a hotel. Uh, there was jobs for draymen, for people to load and unload cars. Uh, and in 1861, when General Lee was in charge of the uh, Virginia uh, military effort here, he begged the people in Petersburg to allow them, to the military, to connect the railroads in order to move, in that case, in order to move soldiers from the Richmond and Petersburg Depot to the Norfolk and Petersburg Depot because the seat of war was down around Hampton Roads at that point. Well, the city council in Petersburg finally agreed to do that, but they stipulated that as soon as the military necessity was gone, they would tear up the connecting tracks and revert to the individual depots. Now, the scenes at these railroad depots in Petersburg were very memorable. One of the ones that resonates with me, about 300 black, free blacks in Petersburg. And one of the things to know about Petersburg is it had the largest percentage of free people that were black of any city in the South. And today we know Petersburg as a small city, about 35,000 people. But in 1860, it was the seventh largest city in the Confederacy, or 1861. And it was the second largest city in Virginia, only exceeded by Richmond. A very large free black population here. And we don't have a lot of documentation about what the motivation of these blacks, free blacks in Petersburg, volunteering to serve in the Confederate Army. One can expect that most of them were trying to get on the right side of a slaveholder's republic. But of course, Virginia wouldn't allow black soldiers at that time, but they did allow these free blacks to go to the Norfolk area, Hampton Roads area, and become laborers. And the citizens presented them with a flag, and there was a great ceremony, and off to the seat of war went these, went these African-American residents of Petersburg. Why was Petersburg such a big town? Well, it was a port city. This is the head of navigation on the Appomattox River, which is just about two blocks to the north of us here, just out of sight. That wood line that you see in the distance is the river bank. Ocean-going vessels could come all the way into Petersburg. But as the drafts of the ships became, got deeper and deeper, and the Appomattox River tended to silt up, 
and it was hard to keep it dredged. That's when in 1838, the economic mavens of Petersburg decided to make City Point, eight miles to the northeast of us, uh, basically the port for Petersburg. And that's when they built the railroad, the City Point Railroad. And I think it was in the 1850s that the Southside Railroad took over the City Point Railroad, incorporated it into its larger entity. So that's why this depot served both of those railroads. Now, Petersburg was a port. Obviously, it was a railroad center. It was also a huge manufacturing center. 20 tobacco factories existed in Petersburg, four iron foundries, four cotton factories. This was the northernmost place in the United States that both grew and processed cotton. So there was an awful lot of industrial employment in Petersburg. And that's what fed this very large free black population in town. So Petersburg was a very going and very important city economically. But by the time 1864 rolls around, it becomes the focal point for the campaign of Petersburg that lasts 292 days. And scores of buildings in town were damaged by Union shelling in the city. Uh, at one point during the war in the summer of 1864, the vast majority of the population of Petersburg became refugees as they moved out of this section of Petersburg out into the countryside or with relatives someplace else to avoid all of the shelling. But eventually by August or September of 64, most of those people returned to their homes in town, realizing it was probably better to be, take the chance of being killed by a Union shell than it was starving to death out into, out into the countryside. So part of the Petersburg story here is not only the military that we tend to focus on here, but this is probably ground zero for studying a southern population at war and how war affects the people that were not in uniform. And that's great, Will, and, and Will's the one to do it. I, I read his Civil War Petersburg book. I think you should read it. He's also writing um, a three-volume set about the actual fight for Petersburg, the campaigns for Petersburg. And it's a uh, uh, Stride of the Giant? Campaign Cam of the Giant. Campaign of Giants. I'm so sorry, UNC Press. I want to say, while you look around here, too, some of it might look familiar. This is where a good number of the scenes from the Lincoln movie, uh, 2012, were actually filmed. You can see some of the things right behind me um, over here. And, and if you don't mind, Will, can we go around the corner or just go around and look up a little bit? And Absolutely. Check out the Before we leave the, the railroad depot, if you look up into the, uh, the right-hand window on the second floor, that was William Mahone's post-Civil War office. Many of you realize that William Mahone was a railroad engineer. He was very responsible for building the Norfolk and Petersburg Railroad, the last of the five railroads to be constructed into Petersburg. But after the Civil War, he became the president of something called, I believe it was the Atlantic, Mississippi and Ohio Railroad. And his headquarters was right here in the old Southside Railroad Depot. So Petersburg has a lot of William Mahone connections as well. And I think, I can't remember how, but you, the members of the American Battlefield Trust, helped uh, to preserve the Southside Railroad Depot. I can't remember the details because we don't really do buildings in towns, but we helped. Come on. Good. Let's go. <laughs> Petersburg today, I would hate to say it, but it's a, it's a depressed town. And, but one of the, I guess, silver linings to having a, a town that's on the hard side of economics is that there's so much of it preserved. There are literally scores of buildings from the Civil War era still extant in Petersburg. Petersburg had a big fire in 1815 and as the fire destroyed all the wooden buildings, the people decided, well, listen, we're going to rebuild this town, but we're going to rebuild it in brick so it doesn't burn to the ground like it did in the second decade of the 19th century. So as you look around this streetscape here, just about every building that you see dates to before the Civil War. Now, the building that we're 
standing next to right now is an 1879 building. It was a farmer's market in 1879, but there was a farmer's market here during the Civil War as well. Around the corner here uh, is uh, a whole streetscape, a whole streetscape of antebellum buildings, residential buildings. Uh, this was, this area is, is the, the, the heart of the oldest part of Petersburg. Petersburg was established all the way back to 1646. There was a frontier fort here. And it, it was a trading post here run by a man named Peter Jones. And it was Peter Jones's name who gave the name of the town Petersburg. People joke around here that when Peter Jones left, left to go back to England, he said, don't do anything until I've come back. And they haven't done anything since he left. <laughs> uh, but in a lot of ways for people who care about history, uh, this is an architectural gem. I wish we had the time to do a whole walking tour of Petersburg. There are beautiful residential buildings. There are beautiful commercial buildings. A number of wartime churches are still in Petersburg. And many of the structures that had something to do with the campaign are still extant in this wonderfully important historic town. And, and many of which we include in our Petersburg Battle app. Uh, Doug, if you could take a few steps to the left, we can close with a photo of the Petersburg, Virginia Courthouse, which you see here. And you can also see probably right through the trees um, above there in the distance. Thanks, Doug. Thank, uh, thank you to Will Green and thank you all for watching and supporting Battlefield Preservation and Education.